Here is the cheese cutter uh, prototype, actually prototype 2, uh, with uh, some uh, fancy features on it. Um, the heart of the system is a collar machined out of stainless steel with precisely machined slots, uh, each one quarter inch apart. Those slots accept a modified hitch pin that can slide in and clip in place and the key is is that the straight leg of the hitch pin here fits into that slot in such a way that it uh, just uh, protrudes into the hole uh, that runs through the collar. That means that it will engage the, the notches in the second key piece which is a uh, ram or a, a rod that slides down into this collar and has notches in it machined at precise one inch intervals. And so when the hitch pin is put in place and this comes up, it clicks into that notch and the cutter can then be indexed and then pulled up to the next notch and indexed and so forth. Uh, obviously with one inch notches here and with quarter inch notches here, uh, a person can choose different combinations of quarter inch uh, uh, spacing. So if I want one inch spacing, I just put one index pin in and each time it clicks I'm one inch. If I put two hitch pins in, uh, separated uh, uh, evenly there, then obviously I'm going to get half inch indexing each time I pull up. And of course I could put four hitch pins in, get quarter inch indexing. And uh, also if I needed something that uh, might be a little bit unusual, say I needed three quarter inch indexing, I would put all four pins in and one, two, three, now I've just done a quarter, three quarters inch, one, two, three, I've done another three quarters inch. So um, flexibility there. Uh, certainly a person could uh, machine these spacings uh, on a different basis, could machine these spacings on a different uh, basis. Uh, if there was a particular need for uh, some other sizes. Uh, I have found in using my version of this, which is uh, not quite as nice, but uh, very similar, that the uh, ability to index down to quarter inch is more than adequate. Um, if I need, for example, if the recipe calls for 3 8 inch uh, spacing, uh, it's not very difficult at all to um, uh, simply cut my vertical cuts uh, uh, maybe at a quarter inch and then index to half inch horizontally and even though it's not a perfectly uh, uh, you know, a regular cube uh, it's uh, a, certainly a very regular uh, rectangle uh, that uh, works quite well. Uh, all of this of course needs a cutter and so uh, at the bottom of the uh, rod here, there is a hole uh, just big enough to take a 332nd inch piece of stainless that slides in. It really, as I found, doesn't need to be secured in place. Uh, once you have it centered, uh, it will stay centered. It may, uh, you know, have to get a little adjustment there as you wiggle it, but um, really doesn't need anything to hold it in place. So that can just be slid in uh, to use as the cutter. That cutter, the hole for that cutter, is completely aligned with the uh, handle. Uh, and that's important because um, as you uh, put the uh, cutter into place, into the pot, you would want to line it up with your vertical cuts. I found it's better to make the vertical cuts first, slide this in along the vertical cut, and then as I index it, I know that each time I index, I can end up uh, at the same uh, spot so that I'm not recutting vertically every time I move the, the rod. Uh, you'll notice that this particular rod here, this particular cutting uh, uh, part, is uh, quite a bit longer than this pot and that's intentional uh, to allow plenty of room for whatever size pot uh, you might want to use. 
what you'll need to do, of course, is determine the diameter of the pot you want to use and cut the rod maybe an eighth of an inch shorter than that. And that will uh, allow enough room for clearance, but uh, still get uh, well to the edges. Usually it's just off center enough that it uh, completely cuts as you go around. Um, obviously when you cut it, you will also want to smooth the end to a nice rounded smooth end uh, so that it won't be uh, uh, something that would catch you or, or be jagged or anything like that. Uh, the mechanism here needs to fit into something that will hold it in place. And so there is a uh, unit here uh, that bridges across the pot and holds the collar. Just slides in a hole there. That collar, of course, is kind of loose at the moment, so uh, I need something to hold it securely. So these adjustable pieces slide up and just overlap the edge of that collar on either side. And then they're secured in place with a cam action clamp here. There's a pin that you can see here uh, and uh, a cam action clamp here. So as you turn this, you see the pin perhaps come up there and it locks down very securely. And of course, lock it down on both sides. And now that collar is going nowhere and uh, will not wiggle, will not turn, will not move uh, during the indexing. Likewise, there are the side pieces here to allow uh, setting the crossbar to the uh, size of the pot. And that's uh, fairly important because you want this to be held somewhat securely. It can wiggle some, and that's all right, but uh, you don't want it sliding all over the place as you try to uh, index it. And so you need something here that holds the, uh, the crossbar in place. This one is adjustable, uh, and so there are these sliding pieces here that uh, work with the bottom piece. The bottom piece is slightly rounded just to help it uh, catch up against the pot. Uh, but you slide this up here, you get it centered, and it doesn't have to be absolutely perfectly centered, but it helps if it's close. Uh, and then just engage the clamp, and voila, I've got it in place. And of course, we can adjust it as need be if it needs to be a little tighter. Uh, okay, that's very secure. That's not going anywhere. Um, the sequence for cutting the curd uh, is to um, put your vertical piece here through. Uh, obviously I would do this not on the pot. Uh, I would uh, first uh, get it assembled. I'd put my uh, cross piece through. I would put my cutter piece in. I won't do it now because it won't fit in the pot. And then slide it all down uh, and of course I might leave this up a bit farther, but put it down and and again I try to line this up with the vertical cuts so that it just slides down in one of the slots that I've left with the vertical cut. That's security place. And then I'm ready to start cutting. This is all the way at the bottom now. I would put my index uh, hitch pins in place preferably not dropping it into the curd. And I'm ready to start indexing. Now I'm set up for half inch indexing. And so I would turn it and I go ahead and turn it 360 degrees uh, since the rod, the cutting rod extends all the way across a person could just go half each time and that should be adequate but for no particularly good reason I just go ahead and do a full 360 and then pull up to the next index turn it, pull up to the next index turn it and you can see that it goes very very quickly uh, one thing that's not obvious from uh, the video here is that the notches in the uh, vertical piece here uh, are machined in a way that allows very easy movement upward, very easy to index to the next slot there, 
but, whoops, well I guess you can do it, but uh, it takes a fair bit of pressure to push them downward. And so the point is, is that you can index e upward easily, but then not worry about it sliding uh, out of place unless you just really push on it as I did a second ago. Uh, so that, uh, that makes life easy. There are some things that I would do differently. Uh, this uh, still is really a prototype, even though it's a pretty uh, uh, well-finished one. Um, one thing that I would do differently is that uh, the way these blocks engage, it is uh, obviously a little tight in there, particularly if I want to put a hitch pin in this bottom slot. Uh, it's, it's hard to do with this block in place. I'd have to move it back, slide it in, and then re-secure it. And that works. It's, it's not hard to do, uh, but it's a little bit less than ideal. And part of the issue is, is that in order to have enough uh, uh, material here in the wood so that when the cam action clamp is engaged it doesn't crack the wood, uh, there needs to be a little beef to that and so this is a bit taller here uh, and that means that it's a little hard to get it down where it doesn't get in the way. Um, so that's a somewhat of a defect there, uh, could be addressed simply by maybe changing the shape a, a little bit of this block. Um, but uh, another uh, issue uh, is that uh, the unit as it is now is, is pretty uh, intensive to produce. Um, it took a fair bit of time to produce all of the parts for the cam action clamps. Uh, obviously if a person really went to major production, uh, assuming we could find thousands of people who wanted to buy such a thing, um, it would not be uh, nearly as expensive to have them made in bulk, but uh, to make them in small quantities uh, would be pretty uh, prohibitive in terms of the amount of time uh, and or expense to uh, machine all of these little pieces here. Uh, so um, that's something that I think uh, uh, needs to be rethought. And so one way to rethink that, to redo that, is instead of these uh, handy dandy uh, uh, cam action clamps, the nice thing about them is, is no tools are needed, uh, it's ready to go, but uh, a way to uh, make this uh, uh, much more affordable uh, would be to replace all of these with simply a, a machined uh, piece uh, at the top that accepts a uh, hex uh, head screw, uh, uh, Allen uh, bolt, uh, and then just simply put them in place and tighten them down. Uh, there would be a machine and collar uh, similar to what's on the bottom of the pieces uh, now would be also at the top of the pieces uh, to allow for the placement and then tighten down with an Allen bolt, uh, Allen wrench. Uh, the disadvantage, of course, is that would mean having an Allen wrench uh, that has to be kept up with, and so that is a, a drawback. I was aiming for a tool-free option with this, and I succeeded, uh, but again, it has a, a drawbacks of its own. Uh, but if we did simply a, a machine collar on the bottom and a machine collar on the top, uh, the one here would have to be large enough to catch the lip, uh, but that would not be hard to do. Tighten down with an Allen wrench, that's now secure. Same thing here, take out this wooden block. Would need to leave the bottom wooden block uh, to butt up against the edge of the pan, but uh, machine collar on the bottom, machine collar on the top, Allen bolt, and that would be very simple, be simple enough to use, um, and a whole lot easier and cheaper to manufacture. Uh, that is the curd cutter.